we're here with Aaron Higgins, the founder of 1010 Music, a modular synthesizer company that specializes in uh, in using in creating digital modules that have a tremendous amount uh, of flexibility and power. Hi, Aaron. Hi, nice to see you, Nick. Thank you. Can we uh, take a look at your stuff? What is it that you guys do here? Yes, so we make a line of modules based on touchscreens and based on trying to steal all the best ideas from plugins and audio software. So you notice that among our four different products, you'll see a lot of things that in common with Ableton, with MPCs, and with software synthesizers. So huh. starting in the upper left, we've got Toolbox, which is a note sequencer, piano roll sequencer, and gate sequencer, as well as a function generator. So you can do LFOs and other things that are all united to by a common clock. So you get some of the same advantages you would get on plugins and host-based automation. To its right is Bitbox, which is a 24-bit sampler looper. Uh, we've just enhanced it to have things like you know, zoomable waveforms wow. and, and thumbnail overviews so you can get a much better sense of what you're dealing with. That's, that's a really nice use of the touchscreen technology there. I agree. It's something that's very hard to do in a modular world otherwise. Uh, we've also enhanced it to now deal with samples, sort of melodic samples of looping, uh, reverse, clips, which you've been doing for a little while, which is more about quantization of start time, stop time, and getting things beat aligned using the slicing technique. And then finally, actual slicing. So this one here, uh, you will, that's a one shot, but some of these, there we go, breaks. You notice that each one of these has a little marker, and you can yeah. play each one of those separately, uh, controlled by CV or controlled by MIDI. So you can really sort of break things down in the common elements. It's particularly great for drum breaks where you can just have something sequenced and just a simple MIDI transposition, you can get a it's totally different instrument set and wildly vary that on the fly and get some cool results. Now, does your software analyze those transitions or do you have to put them into the file as markers or something like that? There's a scan feature that gets you 90, 95% of the way there. So particularly something like that that's very clean, you know, separated hits, I'd be willing to best guess that it's like 98% there. That's great. And then is there any methodology if it gets you most of the way there, can you tweak it on the Absolutely. On the I mean, you can you know dial this toolbar in and start doing joining and scanning, and then you know zoom super micro in and wow, say that, that. You know, oh that one's actually a little too. I want to put it there instead. So something like that's possible, and that is down to the individual sample. Level. I was going to say touch screen. Uh, waveform view down to the sample level in a modular synthesizer. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, in fact, you don't see a lot of that even on like plugins. You, know, no. you might be able to do it with a mouse, but it's still quite cumbersome to get down to the, the minutia. Wow. You know, I noticed um, that all of your units here, they uh, are all lined up sort of the same way, and they have a tremendous number of inputs there. Um, and then they've got these then they have these knobs here that are, you know, digital knobs that can be, you know, context specific. What are all of these inputs here used for? There sure are a lot of them. Right, on this, we've got two different platforms. On this platform, these are all zero, I'm sorry, negative five to plus five CV inputs, which we're using a variety of different ways. We'll talk about the other two in a second. Okay. But this is, you know, CV inputs. Over here on this side, it's a mixture. Four CV inputs, eight gate outputs, and eight CV outputs. Um, there's also, yeah, a, many different ways to come in and out of the boxes. The toolbox uses MIDI outputs, you know, MIDI and audio inputs, and the, the bit box uses four audio outputs and the same arrangement of inputs. That is an incredible amount of flexibility and an awful lot of uh, power to be able to go in there and configure your, configure your, you know, whatever it is that you're doing with it. And a, a popular request, we had uh, customers ask us to make it possible to flip the UI so that you could turn the unit upside down. So if you pan to your right and take a look down here, you will see that um, there's a way to flip the thing over and use it kind of in battle mode. Oh, wow. Which is great for ergonomics and just lets people put them at the bottom or top of their racks and you know, do it however they like. So it gets the, one of the limitations of your rack, of course, is all of the cables getting in the way of performance. Right. And so if you do that, that's a really nice performance approach where you can move the cables out of the way. And that's, it, that's very slick. Yes, that's been very helpful. Um, so you've now gotten a basic idea of Bitbox. Uh, to its right is Synthbox, and it's worth pointing out these are a common ha hardware platform. You can buy one and swap software and go back and forth behind wow. the scenes. It is, in fact, the same hardware, just different front panels. Uh, Synthbox is a four-note polyphonic synthesizer using wavetable synthesis. So you've got, with each of the four voids, four notes, 
two wave table oscillators and a sub oscillator. And as with the other modules, you can simply drill in with the touchscreen and, and play with the various parameters. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <coughs> Pardon me. Go ahead. So, so I noticed that all of these have got a little micro SD slot. You know, I can see where that would be useful for the sampler because you can use it to do recordings. Um, can you use it to take your own wave tables and put them into the synth box as well? Yes. As long as you build stuff to a specific format, but a wave format at a specific thing, yes, you can load them in. Um, so that's quite handy. We use the same format as Serum, the host space plugin that does really cool wavetable stuff. I see. Um, so you can export from that into the format that we can read. Wow, interesting. That's, that's very, very cool. And then, uh, oh, back to before we get to the next one, I would imagine that you have a tremendous amount of uh, uh, capability to be able to modulate the digital oscillators and filters inside from those plugs, right? Yes. There's three assignable oscillators, I'm sorry, assignable modulators coming in the door. And you can either choose to have these three modulators apply to all four voices, or you can split it out so that each voice is assigned to a different row, so each of the control and output is assigned to a single row. So it's you know more finely tuned or higher level if you prefer. And all of these have got MIDI inputs, so you could literally drive these modulars from a computer if you wanted to. You absolutely could. I mean, we find MIDI to be a perfect solution for polyphonic or even clock-based interconnects, because if you were to try and do four-note polyphony, with controllers and velocity control, you would literally fill up all these jacks. Yeah, is... you, would, you would be using an awful lot of hardware there. Right. So I love the idea of using digital where digital makes sense, you know, using computers where they make sense. And then what, what do we have down here? Down on the bottom is effects box, which is inspired by sequence-based effects you see in a lot of cool plugins. So each of these 16 effects can be used at the same time. I mean, you know, effects processing things like flanger, uh, bit crusher, delay. Uh, and they can be both sequenced with a built-in sequencer or externally uh, controlled with the touchscreen. Or if you're, you're watching this square flash on and off, you may notice that there's a sequence going on behind the scenes. Oh, wow. So each of the 16 cells has its own different sequence and you can layer them up into presets of which we supply about 50 and get some really crazy tricked out sounds that you know, it's kind of like live remixing. Especially when you have things like looping and reverse and others where you, know, you can really jump around the waveform and do stuff that... It just, it just sounds so wonderful. I was mentioning uh, to Dave Rawson earlier that as a sound designer, we're always looking for the holy grail of some ability to be able to really have a lot of control over sound on the fly, where we can you know, record in a sound and then quickly be working with it and manipulating it in an expressive way. And it seems to me that uh, effects box there would really allow you a lot of uh, a lot of power to be able to very quickly be able to take the sound and manipulate it and then re-record it back into your digital audio workstation. Right. If, uh, sorry. Effects box itself is great for sort of live manipulations, uh, including some limited amount of sampling looping. Yeah. Bitbox, on the other hand, will in fact go into you know, full-blown recording. So clock-based or free freewheeling looping. You can choose a length in advance, like say I want a four bar loop, and then based on your MIDI clock or an, or an analog clock, you can grab a four bar phrase, and then from there you can do all the stuff that we just saw. So wow. this is a better platform for capturing stuff you want to keep, because then it's just building 24 bit 48K wave files from that. And you know, the, uh, another wonderful thing about Bitbox is in addition to using it as a sampler, you can literally use it as a recorder that's got the correct voltages to be able to record your performances. Right, it's grabbing the Eurorack's standard plus plus minus five volt analog inputs so that it's you know that kind of gain level and works a lot better. Something you should know about our modules is that you can swap firmware between them. So if you buy a bit box, you can cross-grade it over to Synthbox or Effects Box and vice versa. Uh, it's quite an easy process. You simply take the micro SD card out, put it in your computer, go to our website, you register with our forum, download some new software, and then it just becomes these other two units. At the present time, these three are swappable, Bitbox, Synthbox, FXbox. Toolbox is a different category because it has different I.O. So that's not swappable with anything yet, but we anticipate making that part of a broader product line. So Aaron, how much do you charge for the different firmware sets? For you, Nick, it's absolutely free. For They're everyone, free. it's absolutely free. <laughs> so what you're saying is if you buy Bitbox, 
you're buying Bitbox, Synthbox, and Effectsbox all at once. That's right. I mean, one of our sales guys pointed out it's a regret-free purchase is one way to put it. Wow. That you can easily swap back and forth and at least get something that's useful, or if you get bored, you can go back and forth. That is an incredible bargain. What have you got planned in the future for 1010 Music? Uh, we've got a lot of things planned. I mean, we're learning that software can do a lot of things. It's incredibly versatile. It's both a blessing and a curse to have a software platform. So we're looking at a variety of different new tools that you can build on us. Now we're looking at you know ways to you know repackage what we've done and sort of higher and lower price points to get stuff that's you know more versatile and can can reach different markets. That's absolutely wonderful. And you can buy your modules in uh, in the usual in the usual stores, both online and in brick and mortar. That's right. It's available a lot of places uh, in the LA area, Perfect Circuit, uh, nationally, Sweetwater, and a variety of places internationally as well. Well, Aaron Higgins, 1010 Music, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.